Yo, what's good YouTube, SCG here, man. Before you guys skip ahead, I'm gonna put a timestamp either in the description below or I'll put one right here on the screen as well so that if you don't have any time, which I know you probably have time, everyone's just sitting at home doing nothing. If you guys don't wanna see this intro, man, you guys can skip ahead straight into the tutorial. I'm gonna preface this video with just a little bit of context so you guys know exactly who this is for and if this video is for you. All right, so here we go, man. If y'all have checked out the original video, I'll post it up right here on the top. That video talks about if you recorded footage on an iPhone using the, the native app, it recorded in a .mov file. And typically if you drag some of these files over into Premiere Pro, then sometimes it'll start skipping and acting real jittery. Now in that video, I talk about how to convert footage that you originally shot in 24 frames per second or 30 frames per second. Now the major drawback to this original video is that if you shot it in 24 or 30 frames per second, this technique will not work. It's not gonna work for footage that you shot in slow motion or also known as like 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second or, or even higher than that in some cases. The media coder using that specific codec is not capable of doing higher frame rates. So if you shot slow motion footage or 60 frames per second or higher, then this video is for you because I'm gonna show you how to convert that footage into a more usable codec. Now the second part to this introduction is gonna give you a few more options as well. I'm gonna be specifically talking about using your iPhone native app in order to shoot in most compatible and most efficient and what the difference is between those two. Now, if you know you're gonna shoot your footage in either 24 or 30p, you can head over to settings on your iPhone, head over to settings. You're gonna scroll down to the camera and if you look about halfway down that screen, you'll see something called formats. You're gonna go ahead and click on formats and it's gonna give you two options in terms of what codex it's gonna use. One is high efficiency, one is most compatible. High efficiency is gonna do exactly what it says. It's gonna use smaller file sizes, which is HEVC, but the drawback to this is sometimes you end up getting jittery footage when you go ahead and try and edit it on Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve or whatever video editing software you're currently using. As a caveat to that, the only time you can use high efficiency is if you're shooting in 24 or 30 frames per second. So this, this video specifically here, like I, like I started off talking about earlier, this is for people who shot slow motion footage, which is 60 frames per second or higher. So the only way you can shoot 60 frames per second or higher on the iPhone native app is by going ahead and going with high efficiency, which is H.264. These file sizes are a little bit larger, but then when you drag them into Premiere Pro, sometimes they get jittery. And then when you try and convert them over using the media encoder, it's not gonna allow you to do it because it doesn't do 60 frames per second or higher. So this is kind of in addition to uh, some of the comments that people were helping out um, other people on, on the original video. And that is, you know, if you use most compatible, then you won't run into the jittery problem at all. But that's, that's not true if you're using uh, slow motion footage. All right guys, so once we are inside your media encoder, scroll down to where it says Apple ProRes, go ahead and open that drop-down menu. We're gonna use the Apple ProRes 422HQ codec for this specific video. Go ahead and right click on that, hit preset settings. Once that window pops up, scroll down to where it says render at maximum depth. This is gonna give you the maximum amount of quality coming out of your video. Go ahead and hit save a copy and what's gonna happen is it's gonna drag this preset over into your preset window. Once you've located that preset, all you have to do now is locate wherever your footage is at, whether it's 60 frames, 120, even 240. Click it, go ahead and drag it over on top of that preset, and then you'll see it populate in the queue window over here on the right. What we can do now is go ahead and click on the output file, choose where you wanna save it. In this specific example, I'll just, I'll just save it to the desktop. Click save, and then go ahead and hit that green play button on the upper right-hand corner of the queue window. Once it does this thing, go ahead and locate it wherever you saved it to, and that's it, you're good to go. This method also works for 24 and 30 frame per second video clips as well. So this kind of negates my older video, but nonetheless, this is still a way that you can get it done. And I hope this helps you guys out. I hope that clears up some of the issues that some of you guys were having when converting some of your 60 frame per second or 120 frame per second footage. And once again, man, just like in the other video, if you guys have anything to add to it, or if you guys want to um, drop some other stuff that you guys feel that may work better for you. In the last video, there was a lot of people in the community talking about um, they figured out a way to do it on VLC player. I haven't figured out a way to do it um, as of yet. I might have some time to play around with it since I'm just literally at home doing nothing. But yeah, man, if y'all wanna mess around with VLC player, I know that that player actually converts 
um, codex from one codex to the other as well. You guys can check that out too if you want. Anyways, man, I hope you guys are staying safe out there. You're staying as active as possible while you're stuck at home. And until then, hopefully I'll catch you guys in one of my next videos.